Hello everybody, it's game two between Liquid Rhett and CSC Dez. I think he's got his own team. Cool. Game one, there's an annotation down below to take you to that, and I'll be giving some spoilers on it in a second, so if you don't want spoilers, go and check it out first. It's a pretty fun game, pretty fast game, and it showed just a, a, the power of going for really good run buys with Hellions, and what you can accomplish as a Terran player against a Zerg that just doesn't do enough stuff to prepare for it. Rhett essentially just got run over because the economy got cut in half, and then he spent most of his time droning back up when a giant mech army came across the map and crushed him. So, good game out of Daz, but I actually put a little bit more blame on Rhett for not quite understanding, maybe having his overlords in better positions to look for run buys, um, having those roaches in the right spots. He just had himself too vulnerable to get hurt. This is another one of the newer maps that we've got going on here. I haven't done too much laddering recently, so I haven't had a chance to play on a lot of these maps just yet. This one looks kind of boring to me. This looks like a big box. But it's got some interesting you know, design elements to it. Getting really close to the edges is really nice because that means it's hard for things to do drops behind you or banshees if you get the defenses in the right spot. And it looks like it expands well, but into a really, really wide ramp. So it's hard to go for super greedy early bases. Like even as a Protoss player, if you wanted to go for a Forge Expand, it would be very tough to finish this wall off here. So it creates a little bit of a different dynamic in the early games, at least. Looks like we're going to have a Reaper opening once again. Last game, Dez got his Reaper sniped really fast. But as I said, he's able to recover with just mass Hellions and do a lot of damage with that. We actually have a Gas and Pool opening here. I wonder if we are going to get a bit of a speedling all in. And you see this quite a ways off having enough minerals for another hatch just yet. And it's not too bad of an idea to do this, particularly there's a big distance between your main and your natural. So that means your zerglings get it very easily sniped on this map. So for him to go and cut gas and just get the speed started really soon, I don't disagree with. It just means that economy wise, He's not going to be able to get that really good Zerg lead that you generally can get in the early game if you go for something of that nature. Oh, did he not go for a Reaper? I don't know if he's going to lose his Overlord or not. It's going to be pretty close. I do like getting out the Marine first. Has he got a second one coming down? He's huffing it. This is fairly important. And Red is supply blocked with an Overlord just started now. So I think he played it a little bit safe, thinking it would be a Reaper opening on this map, but there was no Reaper, it was Marines, and it cost him an Overlord. Speed is almost finished though, so I mean at least he's got good tech. Two Marines are gonna go out scouting, probably looking for this Overlord. This one down here might be a nice snipe, but he doesn't know it's there. And he's expanding perfectly fine behind this as well. We'll see if he actually goes and throws down a bunker, because once again, this is a really huge open ramp. And if, let's say, you know, 12, 16 speedlings came out, he might actually be able to crush through that. Pretty aggressive two marines here. This is really interesting. This is calculated by Dez. I mean, he knows he's going to lose these marines, but he's forcing out a bunch more lings right now, as opposed to more drones. Ten lings on the way for a Zerg player instead of getting out another you know, five or six drones. The Hellions are going to be out in time to be able to defend back at home. And he does lose those Marines. But as I said, he's forced out a lot of Lings, and it looks like this is going to be an all-in out of Rhett here. Baneling Ness is almost finished, but when you go up against Hellions with enough Hellions, you can generally just micro around most of these things. Nice shots on those lings. So this, once again, he's scouting with his barracks. So you might see this big pile of lings out here. Looks like Rhett's going to try to hide it. Spreading his lings out in different spots. Looks like Dez sniffs what's up. Nice shots on that. And this is going to make any all-in attempt here really tough for the Zerg player. These were lings that were supposed to be made into Bane lings. Nice individual microwing on those Hellions just to get as much damage as possible, and he actually keeps them all alive. Gonna go in there and try to repair them up. Overlord's coming back in again. So this is actually a really bad spot for Rhett. His economy 
is terrible next to the Terran player. He's got all these lings still, looks like he's trying to hide, but he's just going to keep going with us all in. And it's tough for me to say that's a bad move, because he is really far behind, he's got to equalize. But against all of these Hellions, which are going to get repaired up here, I don't think that it's going to accomplish a lot. Doesn't scout any third base out of the Zerg player, generally around the 6 or 7 mana marks, so when you're going to see that third hatchery go down. Probably could sniff that there is some sort of all-in follow-up coming here. Eight Hellions is pretty formidable, though. We see that Rhett is hiding tons and tons of links. He got himself supply blocked, though. So I'm kind of surprised he hasn't moved out with what he has right now. Banshee's out on the way as well. There's no cloak. Banshees are really nice because if it was, say, a Roach all-in follow-up, Banshees do obviously quite well against that. Even more links coming in. Rhett's about to be supply blocked once more. So I assume he's going to have to use some of his larva to actually build more overlords. When you look at the actual economy right now, it's just about double the workers for our Terran player. Oh. Well, that's pretty fortunate for Rhett in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> Sees no drones over here. So Dez did go for the same strategy of mass Hellion pushing. He lost them all. Uh, yeah, he's just going to retreat with the workers. He knows that he's not a great spot. He's going to make some Banelings. There they are. Hellbats will do great against this. It's the Banelings they might not. Hellbats get themselves into a nice corner. So even though they will get taken out, they got in a lot of damage on these links. They're quite beaten up. The wall is not closed right now. Tank is finished. Lol. GG. Good luck. I don't know if that means that Rad has been kicked out of WCS now. He got cancelled out. Uh, but these weren't the best games from him regardless. I think that he came into these. He probably had no idea how Dez played. So it's very difficult for you to scout that. But that means you've got to play a little bit more uh, defensive. Just play a good standard straightforward game. And in this case, even though we got lucky with that big surround on all the Hellions... He still wasn't able to come back down here and, and crush the Terran player as much as he wanted to. There was no way he was going to bust through this and get the damage he needed to. So that means Dez is going to move on to the next round there. Thanks everybody for watching. Sacred Starcraft and we will talk with everybody later.